this uh, Harriet Tubman movie, man. It came out last weekend, and um, as we told you, we talked about Cynthia Vavo or whatever, and her comments towards African Americans and. Yeah, I seen um, people interviewing her, and they didn't really. Um, and I, I didn't watch the interview. Not for one, I got but the. Cause I seen it. Uh, it's a new TV show on Dish. I'm guessing only people in uh, in Georgia would get it. I don't know. I think it's like Central Ave or whatnot. And they talked about the backlash that she was getting from this movie, and it was weird too. I get to that point later, but and they were like, "Yo, the controversy she was getting because I finally start seeing people talk about those comments." Cause mm-hmm. normally they don't. Normally they would say, "Oh, it because she was British," or yeah. it was like. I don't think it's a lot of uh, slave movie where it people who oh, yes. who are African or whatnot and they Nigerian play the Nigerian play and Martin Luther King Jr. And yeah, stuff. and they play the movie and they have no problem people black people go out and watch the movie. But I was like, no, it was her that she had the comments, mm-hmm. and I was like, I don't. They they play snippets from her in other interviews, but I like, I don't really, really remember or seeing her actually address why she made those comments. Maybe I got to go and watch some interviews. No, she never did. But, because I think in one of them interviews with Hot 97, she was like, I didn't get it because I was like, what? what the fuck you talking about? Yeah, because Ebro was cooning too. Because they were like, yo, she was like, yo, um, well, when I'm in the UK, people don't see me as, they just see me as a Brit. But over here in America, when I walk in a room or something, they see me as a dark-skinned black woman. And I'm like, what? No, 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 see, see, this is the thing. Not she's a lie about that, and that's the thing about some of the Africans that I do not like is they lying. They lying. Yeah, like, no. Know, I, when you, when she said on, let that, let me tell you reason why though. Why I say this? If you listen to Iris Iba, right? Iris Iba came from the same place that she did when she, he was acting. Iris Iba said no. They would not allow for me to be a starring actor over there. In the UK. That's why he came to America. What you hear from a lot of these Africans. A lot of these Africans want to lie to you and act as if racism is only a thing that's here in the United no, States of not, America. No, they're not finna say that, yo. Like, when she said that, I was like, what? What are you talking about? Are yeah. you, so you trying to tell me there ain't no racism over there in the UK because I know you're lying. The reason I know you're lying because any place that black people are. Is yeah, they had to but, deal with racism you know, because I seen a thing where it was I don't even know the woman is from French from France or whatnot, but she had a video of like Black Lives Matter in France and they were like, "Yo, yeah. black people just don't deal with racism in America. They deal with it in France." And yeah. and I'm like, "Yeah, of no, course." But, but see, the thing is over there is they play the modern minority respectable policy game, right? So when you see people like her, what she's telling you is. She have separated herself. She's saying, hey, that's African-American black. I'm not African-American black. So she didn't see herself as part of us. That's why she felt, oh, when I was over in the UK, they just judged me as a, uh, a Brit. They didn't judge me as an African. Bullshit. Bullshit. Because mm-hmm. I didn't heard other Africans say that, no. No, it is racism in the UK. It is racism there. Ain't but, that dude Trevor Noah? No, he from like nah, South he Africa. From, yeah, he from Africa. But no, and you just hear these Africans pretending like the apartheid didn't happen. They act like in South Africa that it ain't ninety percent black, but the white people own all the land there, and they live in and in, in piss poor poverty, and the white people there small population got big suburban neighborhoods and stuff like that. They act mm-hmm. like they don't see this. And they go around just blaming their government for it. Oh, it's our government. No, the the, the Western countries, yo, politicians is in the pockets of those people. Like the Western country, Western nation runs Africa. They control all of the resources over there in Africa. But they be sitting around here acting as if they don't know anything about racism. Just because, oh, hey, man, we we come from a continent that's 90% black. Yeah, and it ran by white people. And then I also seen a thing with the, the I guess, the directors of the movie. And they were really Awful. Like, 
They, I was like, what? Because they were like, they talked about the criticism. They kind of didn't talk about the criticism. They were like, they, they felt bad that people felt that way. But then they were like, yeah, people got to understand that the, the, the movie, it's an action movie. It's not a slavery movie. And I'm like, what? Yeah, but see, How the hell are you going to make a well, movie? Like, let, me, let, me, let me go into it a little bit more so you can get a little bit more context on why they saying this crazy stuff that they saying. Well, all right. So, the movie, in the beginning, the ADOS community was just trick, you know, criticizing her because of the comments that she made about black folk. But then, come Wednesday and Thursday, um, the homie Rick, Ricky Ross, Ricky Ross, he got a bootleg copy of it from somewhere, and he watched it, and he started putting up... Um, Clips of the film on Twitter. So the clips started start making the rams and people were seeing it and people started reading about what the storyline and the plot was in this film. Now, her comments was bad enough. So it was about her in the beginning. But then it became about the director and the writers on the movie because they just made up a fantasy life for Harriet Tubman. Mm, now, like when- now, they had a character in this movie. They made a black man the villain. A black man, a villain in a movie about slavery. And I said, if you look at this movie, it's typical of the militant black feminist that's in the United States of America today. The same chicks that would be on that black man trash, black man garbage tip. This is what this film was. And this is what white women have been teaching black women from the beginning. They have been teaching black women that white people are not their enemies in white supremacy, but it is black men. Black men are just as bad too. So if black men are bad, white people are bad, then who's to, who's to blame? Nobody, because everybody is equally bad. This is the same game that Michelle Obama played as well with Reverend Wright. When she was like, Reverend Wright comments about racism was just as bad as racist person. No, it's not because he responded to the racism. So let me tell you, uh, like, why this, the character in this movie is so much of black feminist nonsense. The black bounty hunter, he's a black dude who name is Bigger Long. Now, I want you to think about black feminists, ra- radical black feminist chicken, what they say. They say about black men that black men who date outside of their race, they are being fetishized by these white women. And the only reason why they want them is because of their big penises. So she named this dude Bigger Long. Guess what he's doing in the movie? The reason why he's trying to capture Harriet Tubman is because a slave owner hired him to. But he's going around telling these white folks, though, how he going to get this money so he can go spend it on white whores. This is all feminist nonsense again. Now, they go around and they say, hey, we had uh, black slave catchers back in slavery. They was hired by white people. If they didn't do their job, they would be killed. And also, they didn't allow black people to have guns. This dude had a gun, and he knew more about bounty hunting and the trade of it than the damn white people did. And and another thing, the Native Americans back during slavery was the real slave catchers in that time. So then she created this thing. You will see again. Well, what- I it, it, it still don't. Like, I don't understand all of that. If it was just a regular old slave. Like the movie Django. Django didn't have no historic, like historical as in figure. Django was just a made up character. I understood all. Like, what did you just said? I would have been like, yeah, all right. You can make that movie. 
It'd yeah. be good. But we are talking about Harriet, Harriet Tubman. fucking Tubman. Yes, that's the point. And you telling me it ain't nothing about no that's underground a, railroad, yeah, none yeah, of that yeah. in the movie. That's the, because, Why are you making it? Because, because... I'm, t- I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to tell you why they made it. The reason why they made it, man, is for white liberals. See, you have these self-loathing white liberals. And these self-loathing white liberals, they feel bad about slavery. And what suburban black people, a lot of suburban black people who grow up around them, they try to make them feel comfortable about slavery. This is the same thing that you've seen with this boy from that mood, from that slave play. What that other little young black girl name is, Sandberg? Oh, oh Amanda Sandberg? Yeah, Amanda Sandberg. If you watch every movie that she in, all the movie that that girl be in, it, women, it was written by militant black feminists where they had her falling in love with a racist white boy. Or have her dating some white girl, or this appeasement of white liberals, and that's what this film was. It was to make white liberals go to the movie and say, "Oh, I feel comfortable watching this. Look, it's black people. They were just as bad." But the black militant feminists, they always are trying to paint black men as the bad. Villain to black women. You go back to Tony Morris. I think it was what? Beloved or Color Purple. Where black. This movie took place in a time where segregation was in. Black people was being murdered in the streets left and right. Having a land and stuff taken from them during that time. But she made who the bad guy? Danny Glover. Danny Glover. What's the bad guy? In the film. But this have been. So. It was an interview with this woman that you talked about who did it. And she was saying that, hey, if you don't think that people like Clarence Thomas is this, they do. And Clarence Thomas is up on the Supreme Court trying to take away black women's rights and stuff like that. Like, what? So, so what she's trying to do is tell a story of this coalition building of left wing versus right wing. Feminism versus male patriarchy. That's what these black um, movie makers are doing. And this is what the black liberals in the mainstream media are doing. They so focus on uh, this people of color stuff because they feel that these white liberals are going to save them from something. We have to ally with these white liberals because they're going to save us from the mean old evil conservatives. That's yeah, what these people. Slave movies. Yeah, yeah. Especially that's what they the, believe. So, especially these, uh, like, historical. Now, I never watched the movie Selma. I didn't watch none of that. I ain't, yeah, I know. Back in the day, I did. When I was a little kid, I was forced to watch those movies. And, and they told, basically. The full story of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, whatnot. But, like, eh, like I didn't watch the movie Birth of a Nation either, but from what I heard, that it was more accurate in about what was supposed to happen with Nate, Nate Turner. Nat Turner, was, but, it, was it, it Nate Turner, Nat, Nat Turner? Nat Turner, and see... But again, this movie here, don't even say, they just... No, I'm they, telling you... They, they retconned the whole... They just yeah. Re- like you, you can't do that. But I, and what I said, like yo, like, what, this, I, what like, this movie was, like I get everything you saying. This movie was a black and, radical and I'm, feminist. And, men, and I'm women saying movie. it, yo. And and another thing, like with her, and there's this other chick named Brittany Cooper, right? This is the fat chick that was on Oprah, not on an Oprah show few months back saying racism made her fat. Racism made her fat. So she put up, and I'm put the comments up on the screen so you guys can see it. But she said, um, I can't believe that black men are mad about a move one movie that depicted them as bad. Um depicted them as bad when we used to support this film because it has a black female writer a black 
female producer, and a black female starring in it. Black men are mad because it's the first time that they're not being centered. And I keep telling people that this is the thing with black feminist women. Some of these black feminist women. We got good black feminist sisters out there. But there are militant ones. This is their thing. They are jealous of black men. They feel that black men are being centered and they are not. But the thing is, when we say black lives matter, we say all black people. These two people just hear black men. And so what they doing is fighting for attention, bro, from white liberals. This is what they're doing. This is the same thing with the LGBT community. When you see these militant feminist women and these militant LBGT community people, what they know if we attack straight black men, these people will show us some love. And you had all of these folks out here. Now, you mentioned you brought up uh, Birth of a Nation, right? This black dude, Nate Parker, he, uh, Parker, he gets his film get canceled by black feminist women, right? It get canceled because he was accused of rape. He was acquitted by an all-white jury. All-white jury. But black women got together with white women, and they canceled this movie. Now, that film, was I think it was $7 million that it took to make The Birth of a Nation. And it took in $7 million the first weekend. This movie took um i think what 17 million dollars or something like that to make and it brought in around 11 million and they were like yeah this movie was a success but they was like birth of a nation flop so all of these people were trying to save faith for this movie and the thing is is you seeing all of these black people that i've been telling you guys for so long that these folk were gonna start telling on themselves now that the ados movement is here michael eric dyson Roland Martin, this chick Brittany Cooper, um, Mark Lamont Hill, all of these people was out caping so hard for this film, and none of them could explain the points that we was making about the film and why it's bad and what it is doing because they don't care. What they care about is black women being centered, and they are trying to extract black men away from the political conversation in this country that's what they're doing and i have said before you see these black women that are mad at Jen jenna rodriguez they are mad at john jenna rodriguez because jenna rodriguez is doing the same thing to them that they have done to black men jenna rodriguez is always talking about latinos and trying to get oh, latino yeah. attention what's she supposed to what's she supposed to see fucking latino but but the, but the thing is she fight for all her people while black these black feminist women they're just fighting for black women they just trying to center them they are trying to box out black men so that they get some shine oh, they feel that they are in a competition in this country against their own men that's what they're doing. And so they would all wanted black people to turn a blind eye to this film and just support it because it was black faces and a black writer. That's what they wanted. And that's why I said when you watch them, um, people like Selena Maxwell, and I'm going to talk about her in the next topic. You see, women like that, they was just want people black women to go out and support Kamala Harris just because she's a black woman. This is what Jamel Hill was doing when she was trying to get Luke and Luke came out talking about he support Kamala Harris now. No, they just want people to support black women just to be supporting them. But I said you, black men also got to watch how these black women start acting towards black men. Where these black women want to be centered just so they can come back and then act like they better than black men. Talking about love don't pay the bills. Dating black men is dating down. And all of this nonsense. But that's what you see from these people, bro. I was watching um, a conversation that took place on Twitter. And they was talking about, I don't know if I talked about it on the show or not. 
But these black women was talking about how black men assimilated to whiteness better than black women did. And it was football players and basketball players that they saw in their school. They were sitting up here noticing that white people accepted black men more than they accepted them. And I said, man, you know what black feminists are? A lot of them. Black feminists are Mexicans. Are Mexicans. Because this is how Mexicans do. Mexicans sit back. They see African Americans. It started all the way back with boxing. In boxing, black men were winning. And then Mexican men would be jealous of black dudes. And they wanted to center themselves. Same thing uh, a couple of weeks ago when you seen uh, this uh, boxer named Stephen Shakur. He fought this Mexican dude in a fight, beat the Mexican dude. And then after the fight happened, news his broke. Girlfriend, brother. Yeah, that his girlfriend, brother. But his family disowned the sister because she was with Shakur. Disown them. And this is the thing that you see that that with them, this jealousy of Mexican have this jealousy of black people because black people being centered in America. And that's why you start him. Oh, nobody talks about Mexican. They always talk about black people stuff. They mad because black people been centered. But you see the same thing from these black feminists. That's why I said when conservatives were saying all lives matter and everybody was like, no, nah, that people ain't saying that white people Lies don't matter. They saying that black people lies don't matter at all. But people didn't pay attention to these blacks in the LBGT community who were running around talking about all black trans lives matter. Or all the feminist women saying all black lives matter. These women was doing the same thing that they were accusing Jenna Rodriguez of. They was hating on black men for being centered. This is the same thing that you see from these other immigrants now that are hating on the ADOS movement because the ADOS movement is centering black lineage. This is what you see. But for it to be in our own race, though, that we have these militant feminist women that are doing it in our own race, it's just downright criminal. It's insane. It's insane for it to be happening in our own race. Where a lot of our sisters then decided that they wanted to be an other and not be a part of the collective. Just so they can get the attention of white liberals. All right, people, hit that like button, subscribe.